good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We are reading in the book of Leviticus. Last time we read Leviticus chapter 23, which had various different uh, feasts and rules of those feasts in the Day of Atonement. Now we're ready to read Leviticus chapter 24. I am reading in the Amplified Bible. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel to bring you clear oil from beaten olives for the light of the golden lampstand, to make a lamp burn continually. Outside the veil of the testimony between the holy place and the most holy place in the tent of meeting, Aaron shall always keep the lamps burning before the Lord from evening until morning. It shall be a permanent statute throughout your generations. He shall keep the lamps burning on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Then you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes, bread of the presence, the showbread, with it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each cake, or loaf. You shall set the bread of the presence, the showbread, in two rows, six in a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. You shall put pure frankincense in two censers, one beside each row, so that it may be the bread as a memorial portion, an offering by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath day, Aaron shall arrange the showbread before the Lord continually. It is an everlasting covenant for the Israelites. The bread of the presence shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a sacred place. For it is for Aaron a most holy portion of the offerings by fire to the Lord, his portion forever. Now the son of an Israelite woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the Israelites, and he and a man of Israel quarreled and struggled with each other in the camp. The Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. So they brought him to Moses. Now his mother's name was Shelemeth, the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until the will and command of the Lord might be made clear to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the one who has cursed the Lord outside the camp, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head as witnesses to his guilt. Then let all the congregation stone him. You shall speak to the Israelites, saying, Whoever curses his God will bear his sin through his own death. Further, the one who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall most certainly be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him. The stranger, as well as the native-born, shall be put to death when he blasphemes the name of the Lord. If a man takes the life of any human being unlawfully, he shall most certainly be put to death. The one who kills an animal shall replace it animal for animal. If a man injures his neighbor, fellow citizen, whatever he has done shall be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, just as he has injured a man so shall the same be done to him. The one who kills an animal shall replace it, but he who kills a human being unlawfully shall be put to death. You shall have one standard of law for the stranger among you as well as for the native, for I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the Israelites, and they brought the one who had cursed the Lord outside the camp, and stoned him with stones. Thus the Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now notice here what we're talking about when we get into the eye for eye, tooth for tooth. This was like a law they needed in their society. You'll notice that in a lot of ways we still follow that idea, not exactly, but of, you know, compensating someone for damages done. You also notice that we have one law, one standard of law for everyone in the country, regardless. Now, 
I realize that currently, today, sometimes, our government does not enforce that law equally and fairly. But we do really only have one law for everyone. And I believe that this is really where we get the idea of that. You can't have separate laws for people who are sojourners or strangers or new to your country. You have to have the same laws for everyone. And that means when you go to another country, they're probably the same way. They have the same law for everyone. So you need to know those laws ahead of time. It's not really anything unusual. Now, we don't kill people for blaspheming or cursing God or anything like that nowadays. We have to remember this was a long time ago. They were trying to establish certain rules and regulations for their society. And it's a hard thing to do. But this was still at the beginning when they're trying to establish themselves and they're going to be a new nation. And so some of this may sound, you know, harsh to us today. Well, it was a it was a harsher world back then. It's just something to think about. We still get some of the basic ideas of our laws, though, from this type of idea of compensating each other when we've when we've damaged one another, um, especially if it's accidental. Uh, some of this kind of implies that it could have been on purpose, but it doesn't say that. So it could be that it would be accidental and you would still compensate your uh, your fellow citizen or your neighbor. Just things to think about. Later, the Pharisees really seem to have stre- uh, stressed this idea of, you know, compensating. And Jesus really, in the New Testament, he really stresses the idea of forgiveness and not this idea of being compensated and not requiring compensation or you know, turn about is fair play, like you punch me, so I punch you. And Jesus really took it to the next level and said, no, that's really not the best. He didn't say it wasn't in the law, because it is, but he said this is not really the best. The best is to be forgiving and have grace like God does. So it's a big change for the, the Jewish people to think it, think that way. But it's, it's a big change for us. It's difficult for us in our lives to think that way. So I want to thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.